Garage Woodworks is sponsored by Highland Woodworking. Visit them at their website at highlandwoodworking.com. Welcome to the Garage Woodworks video podcast. Hey, this is Brian Graw of Garage Woodworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made my recently built chisel plane. The plane does a pretty decent job as a shoulder plane or a routing plane, but for the one I'm gonna be building with you now, I plan on making it about twice the size, and instead of a screw that extends to the front to lock the chisel in place, I plan on using a wedge. The body of the plane is made from three quarter inch thick cherry, and in order to keep the plane from splitting in half when you create the slot from the chisel, you need to glue on a piece of wood onto this side. And in this case, I chose a half inch thick walnut. So I already have my cherry mill to thickness and I already have my walnut mill to thickness. So the next step will be just to glue these two pieces together. In order to make the hand plane a little easier to handle, I went ahead and rounded over the top and bottom edge of this walnut side piece. Okay, once the glue is cured for about an hour, we can go ahead and make the slot for the chisel. Once I have this walnut board glued in place, I can go ahead and make the slot for the chisel. Now in order to do that, I created two lines. One at 45 degrees, and this is where the face of the chisel will rest against, and a second line at around 51 degrees. This way I have more room for the wedge to be inserted from the top. In order to safely make these cuts, I'm going to use my table saw sled, and I set my blade depth to, uh, so that the blade will only cut through the cherry and leave the walnut. In order to cut the 45 degree angle, I'm going to use a sacrificial piece of wood that has a 45 degree angle cut on one side. Because I didn't quite cut all the way through the cherry, I'm going to need to raise the blade just a smidge. In order to get the 51 degree angle, I went ahead and lined up the lines with the kerf on my table saw sled and I'll just hold this piece down with the push block. Okay, now that I have both the 51 degree angle cut and the 45 degree angle cut, all that's left to do now is just nibble out the remaining amount of material using the same process at the table saw sled. Okay, now that I have the entire notch cut out, there should be plenty of room for a wedge uh, to be inserted into the plane. And uh, if you're not um, happy with the, uh, the size of the mouth opening, you can always go back later and uh, remove more material. Having just the one strip of walnut on one side of this hand plane should be plenty strong. But if you're worried about the integrity of the hand plane, you could always go ahead and glue on a separate strip on the opposite side. And now would be the time to do that. But uh, for me, I think I'm gonna stick with one strip and uh, see how that handles. And now it's time to make the wedge. I cut out a wedge at the bandsaw at the appropriate angle and it seems to secure the uh, chisel rather nicely in the hand plane. All we have left to do now is to cut out a recess for the chips. In order to prevent blowout on the bottom, I have a piece of scrap wood underneath. Okay, this is what it should look like when you're finished, and now we should have plenty of room for the chips to go as you're planing. Okay, I got a three quarter inch chisel wedged in here. Uh, let's see how well this thing works. Producing some pretty fine shavings. Not too bad. Now let's see how well this plane does as a shoulder plane on a tenon. Not too bad. Okay, so after a coat of paste wax, this chisel plane is finally finished and only took a couple hours of work. 
I made my chisel plane for a three quarter inch wide chisel, but because they're so easy to make, you could really make one for every chisel you have in your shop. Thanks for watching.